Today in the show, we're going to be talking about Raven's revamped all new Night Force team, the characters that are in the team, and why I am super excited for this. I'm just going to throw it out there, I'm just flat out excited for this turn of events. If you've been with me for a while, you know I love two things in comics, teen slash young adult books and magical characters. Like, I'm good now, I can stop, I can just read lots of this. Give me more of this. This team's gonna start as a Raven Daughter of Darkness issue number seven. Here is my issue of Raven Daughter of Darkness at the moment. The book feels like it doesn't know what it wants to be. It knows who it wants to be about, which is Raven, but it doesn't know what, why, or how. Like, it doesn't know what it wants to say, and because of that, it feels very shallow. I read Raven Daughter of Darkness not necessarily because I like it, but because I own every Teen Titans and Titans related book in existence, and because of that, I'm gonna read this one as well because I'm just gonna stop my collection now, but if I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna obviously read it. However, should Night Force be done right, it could potentially be my favorite thing from DC in a hot minute. So, here's a quick rundown of Night Force for all of you that are unfamiliar with it. In the 1980s, horror comics were failing. Marv Wolfman had the audacity to create a horror book in this climate. Marv Wolfman, if you don't know, is one of the creators of the New Teen Titans, the book where Raven actually debuted, and this was actually one of the best-selling comics in the 80s. So Marv Wolfman creates a horror book called Night Force that was about regular people that had a loose connection to the supernatural who would act as a task force team to deal with supernatural threats. It was definitely more of a highbrow book for its time period, and lots of people say, oh, it only lasted 14 issues. Considering it was in a dying genre, 14 issues is actually pretty good. This new Night Force team is going to consist of teen supernatural heroes. These characters all have a direct connection to the supernatural. I've seen a lot of articles that are like Teen Titans spin-off team, as if all of these characters have been in the Teen Titans, when actually no, excluding Raven, only two of them have been a member of the Teen Titans in the past, and one of them was only a member of the Titans in like a flashback. By the time we were introduced to him, he wasn't a member anymore. A lot of these characters are very obscure though, so I'm gonna let you know who these characters are and why you should be excited. We're gonna start with my favorite character at DC, Clarion the Witch Boy. This is actually a very interesting choice because no two incarnations of Clarion have ever been the same. However, I would say his definitive incarnation has definitely been in Seven Soldiers Clarion by Grant Morrison. It's definitely his best incarnation. So in Seven Soldiers Clarion, he's from a town called Limbo Town, which is this town that is underneath New York and it has a race of witch people. So it's witch men, witch women, witch boys, and witch girls. And I say it like that very specifically. It's not sorcerers and sorceresses. No, it's witch men, witch women, witch boys, witch girls. No wizards, witch men, witch boys. Very specific. These people are Puritans, but in reverse. So rather than worshiping Jesus, they worship necromancy, but they treat it just as strict. They have a rule where you are never allowed to go above ground. Naturally, Clarion does go above ground. When he finds out about a plot that would destroy Limbo Town and kill off all of the witch people, he's like, well, I've got to go and save them. He goes back to try and save them and all of them go nuts and are like, you've been above ground and they try to burn him at the stake. So I'm really excited to see him there in terms of how much I like his character, but him being on a team doesn't make much sense to me and I can't see him being there for too long. One thing that strings together all of Clarion's incarnations and really lets us know, okay, this is Clarion, is he's very curious and he goes to wherever his curiosity leads him. And he's not really about building connections with people. As a result, he can't really be on a team because to be on a team, you need to build connections with people. Be they positive or negative, you need to be willing to build connections. However, the previous incarnation of Clarion by Anne Nocenti was such a mess, it only lasted for like six issues. So because of that, I think maybe this might save his character. Also, I know some Young Justice fans are gonna accuse me of forgetting about this. He was never a Lord of Chaos in the comics. That never happened in the comics. That was like exclusive to that cartoon. It was really weird to do that with him as well because Clarion's like not evil. He's not good. He's not a hero. He just exists and then crosses paths with heroes a lot because he does a lot of supernatural stuff. Our next character is Kid Devil or Red Devil. We don't know what he's gonna go by in this book but he was Blue Devil's sidekick originally and then became a hero in his own right. When he was first introduced, he had no actual powers of his own, but he did have like this mechanical trident. However, later on, he would sign a contract with Neron and would be given the powers of a devil, basically. He can summon Hellfire, he's super strong, super fast. He can do anything a devil can do. The details of the contract were that if he could trust Blue Devil by his 20th birthday, he'd get to keep his soul. But after this, he finds out 
that it's Blue Devil's fault that his aunt died. I'm so excited to see them use Eddie again because they really haven't used him much since 2010 where he sacrificed his own life to save the Titans. All of Eddie's actions were always for other people. They were never for himself. In fact, when Rose Wilson joins the Titans and everyone's like, oh, I don't like her, she's Rose Wilson. He was like, hey, let me get to know you. Let me understand you. There have been a few characters that were supposed to be him, but weren't him in the New 52. So this is really the first time since he's been himself since 2010, and I'm so excited to see him again. He's definitely gonna be like the string that holds that entire group together because he's the only one that can do that job on this team. Next, we have three characters that have actually already been in a team together in the past. They're in a team called Coven of Three, and they are featured in one sub story. By that, I mean, you'd have the Teen Titans story, and their book and then like there'll be five pages for the coven of three at the end and it was like very very short and it's great it's a great story but yeah it's it's a thing so first of all we have tracy 13 who's the daughter of terry 13 and mehui lan her mother was a sorceress from china she first appeared in superman in 2003 and she learned how to use magic from her mother but her father is like a super skeptic so having a magical daughter is like just not a thing in his mind. When I was doing research, I found out her powers are described as urban magic, but really she has the exact same power set as Raven. She can see people's auras to follow them. She can produce energy blasts. She can possess people. She also has the potential to be one of the most powerful magic users in DC in the future. She is literally a more emotionally stable Raven with a decent background. Her mother died, but her father genuinely loves her. She was never a member of the Teen Titans, and tonally she was very different from other teen heroes. That's the only way I can describe her. She was a little bit more mature than other teen heroes from DC. It was like she was written as a young adult, and even now she started to appear in Rebirth, and again, she's a little bit more mature than other characters her age, which I really like to see. It's very consistent. We then have Black Alice, who's basically DC's version of Rogue from the X-Men. She's small, she's angry at the world, and she's a Wiccan. And a lot of her storylines have stuff to do with depression, drugs, alcoholism. Her mother committed suicide. She's quite a mature character, to be honest. Like, she's a young character, but her storylines are very mature. She has the ability to temporarily possess the power of any magic user or any superpower in the DC universe. However, she can't control any of them because she has to learn how to control them, but she can't maintain them long enough to learn how to control that power. She also doesn't know how long she will be able to hold on to other people's powers for. So I actually feel like she would work really well alongside Raven in terms of a storyline perspective, because where Raven is an allegory for embracing your depression and sort of overcoming it by embracing it, she's an allegory for fighting your depression, becoming tired of that fight and then becoming angry at the world. If I'm completely honest, I actually feel like Raven and Black Alice being together are the only two that inherently make sense to be together on a team. But at the same time, it's a magical team and I think for a magical team, they shouldn't all make sense together because it wouldn't be magic if it made sense. Finally, we have Zachary Zatara. He has all of Zatanna's powers other than he can't use any magic on people. It just doesn't work. He can use it on animals, at least birds though. He hasn't actually appeared in a single story since 2011. And prior to this, he was never in a story. He just sort of like appeared. He never really had that much development. And in the one story he was in, it was very, very interesting because loads of people read that story as like, Oh, he's closeted and gay. That has never been confirmed, but so many people arrive that he's gay in the closet and he and Kid Devil were in a relationship and that's why they're so angry at each other because they had a bad breakup. That is never in the pages of any comic, but loads of people arrive at that conclusion, which is like hilarious to me because the first time I read it, I was super young and I came to that conclusion. So there is no way that wasn't intentional. Like the few appearances that Zachary has, he really does show all the signs of classic gay boy in the closet trying to overcompensate for the fact that he's gay so he comes across as straight. And Eddie's definitely bisexual because, again, he has like this clear hinted at past of Zachary but he had feelings for Rose. So it would be very interesting to see if they touch upon that in this book. Plus their relationship, if they do touch upon it, would be so interesting to see because you have Zachary who overcompensates to hide himself and then you have Eddie who is red. 
He is red. He can't hide who he is. And he's a really sweet guy and he's just unapologetically himself. So it'll be really interesting to see them like balance each other out in this book. So I'm looking forward to seeing them two together. It is worth noting he was briefly a member of the Teen Titans, but like only for like one or two months. And that's like in comic time. It was only like in a brief flashback that was like half a panel in the comics themselves. So in conclusion, we have Depressed and Happy, Curious and Happy, Bisexual and Red, Lesbian and Mystic, Small and Angry, and Gay and Angry. I can't wait. All in all, I actually feel like this is one of the best lineups for a team DC has had in years. Like, it makes no sense whatsoever, which is why I'm excited for it. A good example of why a team like this would actually work actually comes from DC themselves. You see, DC have had two main magic teams in recent history, Shadow Pact and Justice League Dark. Now, in Justice League Dark, they actually tried altering the characters so they would mesh well together in the context of their stories. However, Shadow Pact, these characters remained unapologetically themselves. And yeah, it was really rough to begin with but once they found like a common ground that all the characters can meet upon and still be themselves they made perfect sense together in that they didn't make any sense together and it was great to read so so long as this book sort of follows what shadow pact did where you have the characters being unapologetically themselves i think this could be one of the best things from dc in a while and i'm really excited it's super effective okay guys that is it for today so are you excited for this book Please let me in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, do all of my social links, check out my Patreon. I am going to start uploading a lot more, I think two or three times a week. I'm going to try for two days a week at first, so please be on the lookout for that if you suddenly start seeing me pop up a lot more. That is why. But for now, my name is Faust. This is Mixed Born Comics, and it is super effective.